What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Mom and Papa Joe. A few months ago, I was running around and I ran into a small town meat market and found the most amazing uh, rack of dino ribs. I had not seen one of these before. We're going to cook that on the rotisserie and it's going to be awesome. Stick around. This is what I was talking about here, folks. This is a rack of dino ribs, man. We've got one, two, three, four, five bones. And it's been cut down from what you normally see in the store when you go looking for that uh, A123 rack. It's got some great marbling. I'm going to get this to the sink uh, and just get it dried off real quickly. All right, so here she is dried off, folks. This is a beast of a rack of dinos. Uh, we're going to do some minimal trimming. I see that there's one side that has a really thick area of fat. I'm debating whether I should just shave that down to give me more of an even cook. And I think I will. Let's see how this works. I'm also going to be removing the bones so I can get this effectively onto my rotisserie spit. All right, I feel better about this right here. This is some awesome fat. Man, look how white and clean that is. This is going to go into my saved pile for my next batch of beef tallow. Now let's take a look and see how to go about getting these bones out of here. All right, didn't lose very much meat. All right, we've got it trimmed up as much as I'm going to do. Let's attempt to get this onto the rotisserie spit. And I hope this is going to work, folks. I am making this up as I go along. <laughs> Try to get this dead center. And we'll see how it works from here. All right, so I think this is going to get us done. Let's see this backside. So I've got two spits that are sitting in the middle, two of my prongs, rather. And I think that's going to get it done. Uh, so just got to tighten down now on my wing nuts really well. You don't want these coming loose during the cook. And the seasoning for this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be uh, Brazilian style, so, sort of like uh, you'd find at the Brazilian steakhouse. Just salt, and if you wanted to, you could add a little pepper, but I'm just going with salt. A nice heavy layer. A lot of it will fall off uh, during the rotation on the spit. The oil's dripping off will knock off some of it, so don't be afraid to pack it on here. This is one of those cooks where I do not want a crust or a bark. I just want that golden color. You can cook this to well done if you'd like, but I don't think I want to do well done. I might stop right around 140 or so, and we're going to call that good. We're going to do a little cleanup in here and then head outside and get the, uh, the Weber grill, the Weber rotisserie set up and going. All right, folks, our fire is ready to go, man. We're running uh, the Cowboy Hardwood Garlic Onion Briquette, and that smell is amazing. So let's get our ring on here, and we're going to be working on trying to situate this rack. We're going to turn on and see what we look like as we rotate. All right, that looks like 
it is fairly well balanced, folks. <laughs> a great thing about this cut, man, is you can stop and slice off pieces off the ends as you go like they would in a uh, in a Brazilian steakhouse. So the outside, of course, is going to be always more done than the inside. We'll come back out here in about a half an hour or so. So we're going to be making a couple of uh, sauces or one condiment and a sauce. What I've got here is uh, one whole slicely thin red onion, purple onion, whatever you want to call it, two tablespoons of sumac, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons of chopped parsley, half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of sugar. Ideally, you're going to make these a couple of hours before you plan on using it. Overnight is even better. Make sure that all your ingredients are incorporated. And we're going to let these onions cook for a couple of hours in this vinegar and oil mixture. Now for our sauce. What I've got here is one cup of plain Greek yogurt. One tablespoon of lemon juice. One tablespoon of olive oil. One minced, finely minced uh, clove of garlic. And here I've got half a teaspoon each of salt, pepper, uh, cayenne pepper, black pepper, cayenne pepper, and cumin. Give this a nice mix. All right, we'll set this aside. Good to go. All right, folks, let's take a look. 45 minutes. Fire still looks great. Got some awesome tallow in the bottom there. Let's see where we are temperature-wise. Trying to get dead center. 113. All right, 114. So I think we got maybe another good half an hour or so. So uh, we'll come on back in another 20 to 30 minutes or so. So today with the beef, we are going to make beef rolls. We're going to make a flatbread, a liquid flatbread, which is a little bit different than what we've made in the past. No kneading and no getting your hands messy. So the ingredients for the flatbread is one cup of flour, half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and one large garlic clove. We also have one tablespoon of chopped fresh parsley, one teaspoon of butter, Oops, one tablespoon of butter and three-fourths cup of water. And now we're just going to mix it. You can adjust the ingredients pretty much to your liking. Once this is all mixed up, we're off to the griddle. All right, folks, it's been another half an hour, and I think we are where we need to be, man. Oh, that is beautiful. Smells great. Let's get a temp. All right, that says 141, 142. Yes, sir, we're going to call it good right here. <laughs> Let's get her off of here for a nice little rest while we get this flatbread knocked out. Just spreaded some ghee on our griddle. It's nice and hot. We're going to spread our liquid flatbread. Almost like doing a crepe. So here's this beast. We've rested a good 20 minutes or so, man. Let's see what we got going. You can slice as thin or as thick as you want. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Folks, that's wonderful. Earth. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to slice this whole thing because that's a lot of meat. Good gracious. And we're not giving any away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know a lot of people love this fat man. Us not so much. So we're going to download some of it. Definitely don't want to download all of it. Oh my goodness. This is so juicy. Hey, 
Mm. Mm. Oh, uh, nice and crunchy. <laughs> mm. 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 That flavor is ridiculous. Mm. Oh my god! Mm. How about a flatbread, Mom? How about how about a roll? Sounds good to me. A little bit of a uh, yogurt sauce. Definitely want to come down with a healthy portion. Man, this vinegar and oil is really active on that. You can leave this in slices, folks, or you can chop it smaller. It's all up to you. <laughs> folks, look at that. Tell me right there. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, that's so delicious. The flavor of the beef just stands out, you know, with the simple salt seasoning. Fairly quick cook. Uh, roughly an hour, 20 minutes, give or take, man. I uh, love it. We'll be doing this again. Want to thank you guys and gals for hanging out with Mom and Papa Joe's as usual. We absolutely appreciate it. Be on the lookout for another video coming soon. In the meantime, as usual, Mom and I want you guys to take care of yourselves, love each other, and we'll see you when we see you. Holla. Holla.